I used to lead a very adventurous life. I was a full-time mountaineer, but everything changed after my accident. I'm hemiplegic. That means my right side is paralysed. I have to use my left side for everything now. I was climbing an amazing sea stack called the Totem Pole, and a big rock fell on my head. A paramedic roped down to me and thought he was recovering a body judging by the amount of blood on the ledge. I was incredibly lucky to survive. The surgeon worked for five hours picking shards of bone and lichen out of my head. I had a massive brain injury. I've had to adapt almost every aspect of my life. Things I took for granted, I've had to relearn. Talking, for instance. I couldn't talk for five months, but it, it really took me a lot longer than that to to be fluent to be as fluent as I am now. But it was like I was a, a little baby again. Everything has changed. The way I talk, the way I walk. I'm still the same person inside. I'm, I was an adventurer before my accident and I, and I still am an adventurer now. It's been 14 years since my accident and every day I've, I've spent trying to get strong enough to get back to the Himalayas. Carol Hurst, a friend of mine who has arthritis, came up with the idea of riding air trikes across Tibet and through the Himalayas, a distance of just over 1,100 kilometres. I thought it sounded like a great adventure and the perfect opportunity to attempt a ride to Mount Everest. Carol was game and so a plan was hatched. It's absolutely outrageous hanging out in Lhasa. The Jokang temples, it's like a mecca for Buddhists. It's a place of pilgrimage, I guess. We feel very welcomed and, and accepted by the pilgrims because I think that they see that we're on a kind of pilgrimage too. After a few days spent in Lhasa, stocking up on supplies, acclimatizing and sightseeing, we were really ready to get out of the city in spite of the crazy Tibetan nightclub scene. As we rode under the Patala Palace and through the West Gate on our way out of Lhasa, I was really excited that our journey was finally getting underway. I can't ride a, a sit up and beg bike, you know, a normal bike. So my trike's been specially made so that I can steer, brake and shift gear all with my left hand. My left leg does pretty much all the work and my right leg is, is just going along for the ride really. Journeying along the road like, like this is really is really fantastic because it means that we can connect with the landscape and the people a lot more readily than if we were looking out of a bus window. For the past week we've been moving across the Tibetan Plateau slowly gaining altitude on nearly flat roads. But that's all behind us now. Tomorrow we're heading up over one of the highest passes on the trip. Well, I guess it was about 60 kilometers yesterday, but maybe, maybe 10 of that was into this well, for me, brutal headwind, which uh, 
which was very tiring. Oh look, there's a pika. Oh no, it's not, it's a bird. And, uh, and so I think I was just so exhausted when I went to bed. I woke up at midnight and and my my right hand was just kind of clawing and going like this. And it was really painful. Probably not had one for about five years. Maybe my anti-convulsant level was low, even though I've been taking them every day. But maybe such strenuous exercise uh, depletes them even more, I'm not sure. Something to find out. I was really, really excited to see the mountains for the first time and to know that we were getting that bit closer to Everest. It was a stunning scene. It really did make me feel like, um, thank God I don't have to climb them anymore. And that's quite a relief because they do look absolutely huge. Coming down the other side, I shed a little tear and thought that this was one of the handful of of days which uh, which were really really special. I mean, you only have these kind of handful of days in your life, really. You know, a dozen days maybe where where you get where where you really feel in tune and and uh, and so yeah, it was one of the happiest days of my life, really. And that's and that's and. And that's something that maybe you should aim for every day, but it's often impossible. Well, we're having a fun day at Disneyland today. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to going on Space Mountain. Well, apparently, we got the, this really rutted, gravelly, stony, loose road, which which we did 20 kilometres of yesterday, and it felt really, really hard. And we've got about I don't know, don't know how much we've got actually. I think it might be 46. Hmm? 30. Well, that's good then. Okay. <laughs> 30, that's, that's fine then. Um, and up, but it's uphill. I, I don't actually think that uphill will make a big difference actually because cause it's more about the rocks and the looseness for me and the, and the, and the washboard. So so I think that it'll, whether it's uphill or not, is it, it'll just be the same. I think, which is quite difficult. And that's the Everest Base Camp. So that's where we're going. It's going to be a really tough, really tough. I think, but I mean, all I can do is is, is give it my best shot. And I think Carol feels the same way. I'm putting rocks in my bag. 
get some traction with these steep, steep sandy hills because you just can't do it without. It's like a Dr. Seuss road, isn't it? And I, I just, I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's, it's totally amazing. I've got, I've got to get a picture of it. I feel like my internal organs have been put through a blender and I almost got thrown out of my seat about six times. And I fit, but I feel like that was just such fun, that was just amazing. Yeah. So. Oh. The next morning we got up early for the last big push to Everest Base Camp. It was a tad dusty and tearing on the gravel, but Carol and I had the mountain in our sight and nothing was going to stop us from reaching it.
it's just it's just absolutely amazing. If if I died right now, I'd be happy. Arriving at Rombut Monastery at the base of Mount Everest was one of the best moments in my life. When I was selling all my climbing gear after my accident, I never even dreamed I would get to see the highest mountain on earth. I think there was there was moments when I when I felt quite unsure of myself because it's a it's a really big thing what what we've just done I think. Next is to go back down that back down that washboarded dirty road. <laughs> Coming down from Mount Everest was tough. For me, the highlight of the journey was past. We still had some long miles to do and I was missing my kids badly. I just wanted to go home and see them. It made me realise that although the mountains will always be part of my soul, that my kids are what is really important to me now. Here it comes, here it comes, the bitumen. We rode down and down and down these incredible hairpins and through these deep gorges for, for four days. The scenery changed from like a high altitude desert all the way to all the way to this kind of steamy jungle. It was absolutely incredible. 4,500 meters of descent, I think it was. It was with mixed emotions that I pedalled into Kathmandu. On the one hand, I was loath to leave the Himalaya. It had been such a wondrous journey like a homecoming back to the mountains. On the other, I was desperate to see my family. I miss my kids intensely. It was time to go home. Oh, you